Welcome back. I survived another regular season. Um, I started I started doing this, I want to say it was 2017, 2018, where I started reviewing every game. Um, and uh, here we are, all these years later, and I survived another regular season. And we didn't know who was playing who in the, the playoffs until the very end of game 1312, the last game on the schedule. So, that being said, we're going to start things off talking about two teams that are missing the playoffs in Seattle and Minnesota. Uh, it was Decord versus Flurry. Eberly has a chance that's held. The Kraken press at two minutes. We get a power play for the Wild. And at 4.04, Kaprizov scores unassisted to open the scoring. Wild look for another. The shots are only two apiece, six and a half minutes in. Uh, Larson has a shot that's caught and held. Zuccarello to Kaprizov. That gets picked off. Eberly's tonight again. Uh, Kraken press with three minutes left. And man, did the announcers want tension in this game. So Hartman takes a hit. Was it from Bjorkstrand? Anyways, he takes a hit and he said something. And so they send Leah Hextall to ask him, basically, like, are you still like, angry? And he's kind of like, meh. Like, it's the last game of the year. Both of these teams don't feel like having anybody injured. You don't feel like starting a fight and ending up with, say, a broken hand the last game of the year. So, no. There, there's no, like, I kept hearing, oh, this, this could get ugly. Why? So they kept saying that in the first period, and I kept thinking, for what reason? Like, they're not even division rivals. There's nothing on the line here. They just want to get this done. Uh, so Boldy misses one high on a late rush, but it's one nothing Minnesota after the first. Second period, the Wild press at three and a half minutes. The shots are two to one for the Kraken at four and a half minutes. We get a power play for Seattle. There was a shorthanded rush by Eric Sinek. He ends up firing high there. Uh, power play is killed off. Everly just couldn't get goal number 300 tonight. Just wasn't happening. Um, McCann has a shot that deflects out. The shots are three to two for the Kraken at nine minutes. Kraken draw a power play and... Veneers deflects one in at 11 minutes to tie the game at one. Schultz and Bjorkstrand with the assists. Kraken go back to the power play. That's killed off. Uh, there's a net feed to Cartier. Near miss there. Kraken press with five and a half minutes left. The shots are nine to three for Seattle with five minutes left in this one. Uh, there's a post for Tolvanen as the Kraken are getting more pressure. The wild press at the final minute. Things are punch pushy at the horn. Nothing comes out of that. So we go to the third period tied at one. Kraken press at two and a half minutes. The shots are two nothing in favor of Seattle, three and a half minutes in. We get a power play for the Wild, and during that, on a shorthanded break, uh, Gord scores from Tanev at 638. We then get 16 seconds of five on three for Minnesota. That's killed off. Uh, the Wild press are kept to the outside. Uh, Zuccarello then scores from Boldy at 1113. Uh, Faber has a net drive, that's held, and then at 1720. Cartier scores from Bjorkstrand and McCann. So suddenly Seattle has the lead back. With 159 left, the Wild get a power play. So goalie gets pulled. It becomes a six on four. And at 18-14, Gord hits the empty net. It's a shorthanded marker as well. So that makes it four to two. 18-54 uh, in. Hartman scores on the power play from Faber to make it four to three. That's as close as Minnesota gets. Uh, Seattle ends the season 34, 35, and 13 on the year. Minnesota ends 39, 34, and 9. Shots on net, 7 apiece in the first, 11 5 Seattle in the second, 11 9 Minnesota in the third. Final shots 27 to 23 for Seattle. Power plays the Kraken, 1 for 3, Minnesota 2 for 4. The hits 10 to 9 Seattle. Uh, Decord 20 saves on 23 shots. Flurry saved 23 out of 26. All right, next up. Uh, Vancouver and Winnipeg. So, uh, Demko versus Brassois. Lots of Canucks resting in this one. Um, really, like, four of their top guys resting in this. So, the shots are 2-0. Jets, two and a half minutes in. The Jets press at three minutes. Canucks press. They couldn't get into the get to the net. But then, on their, what was technically a first shot, uh, Garland has one go in off his shin pad at 522. They took the assists away because it was a Winnipeg player that accidentally put it over to Garland off and in off him into the net. Uh, Canucks press at eight minutes. Myers has a shot that's blocked as the Canucks get some pressure. Teams exchange rushes. Iafalo has a rush chance is kicked aside. At 11.26, Velarde outweights Demko and buries it to tie the game. Iafalo and Lambert with the assist. So Brad Lambert with his first NHL point there. Jets press with seven minutes left. There's too many Canucks on the ice. The Jets get a power play. That's killed off. The announcers were talking about how the Canucks, you know, had gotten away from those too many men calls and now they're getting too many men penalties tonight. I think it's because there were a lot of guys out. Lines were just unfamiliar. I don't worry about it. Uh, 131 left. The Jets get a power play. So that rolls over into the second period. The Canucks finish the kill, but not long after. At 55 seconds, Cole Perfetti scores from Appleton and Schmidt. Canucks draw a power play. That's killed off. There's a power play for the Jets. Nice pad save on Monaghan during that. That power play is killed off. Canucks press at 8 minutes. 
Things get pushy on a hold by Bressois. There's a post for Hoaglanders. The Canucks are getting some pressure. Shots on net are only four apiece with seven and a half minutes left with 314 left. There's too many Jets on the ice. The Canucks get a power play and they score on it. Lindholm tips one in. Hughes and Garland with the assists at 17-11. Ties the game at two. Uh, the Jets do press to close it out, but still 2-2 two, two after two. Third period. Canucks press early. Hoaglander has a net feed that's blocked. The Jets press at three and a half minutes. Shots are only one apiece at four minutes. At 5-17, Chabrikov scores his first NHL goal. Niederreiter with the assist, and he wired it up high. Demko came out, and it was just a mishandle by Demko. Turnover there. Chabrikov makes him pay. Uh, we then get a power play for the Jets. Things are pushy on a hold by Demko. Power play's killed off. 7.29 left is the time when the Canucks get their second too many men on the ice call. The Jets can't score during that. Jets press with five minutes left. Perfetti blocks a Pedersen chance that I think was going in the net. Goalie pull happens with 2.20 left, and at 17.53, Perfetti right in the middle of the net from the other end. Gets the empty netter. Your final score is 4-2. The Jets go to 52-24-6. and six. Uh, with the loss, the Canucks 50-23-9. And, and for the record, if these teams meet in the Western Conference Final, the Jets uh, now have more points than Vancouver. Uh, I, really, though, honestly, if these teams meet in the Conference Final, uh, my wife and I would probably do that preview together and probably have big smiles on our faces because one of our teams are going to the final. Uh, shots on net, 9-8 Vancouver in the first, 8-6 Winnipeg in the second, 10-5 Winnipeg in the third. Final shots, 26-20 for the Jets. Power plays Vancouver, 1-3 for three, Winnipeg, 0-4. Oh for four. The hits, 32-23 Vancouver. Demko saved 22 out of 25. Brassois saved 18 out of 20. All right, next up, uh, the... San Jose Sharks and the Flames. I went with the Seals one because I thought, you know, I'm, I'm doing throwback magnets for, for tonight's games. Why not? Uh, Cooley versus Wolf in this one. Uh, poor Devin Cooley. Uh, early press by the Sharks. Kuzmenko's then denied from the slot. Flames press at three and a half minutes. The shots are six to two for the Flames at four and a half minutes. We get a power play for San Jose. That's killed off. One shot on net. Zetterlin fires one wide, one wide on a rush, and then at 12-13, Klapka from the slot gets his first National Hockey League goal. Um, he's like a giant oak tree, isn't he? Anyways, uh, the Flames then go to the power play. That was killed off, but shortly after, Coleman taps one in for his 30th of the season. I'm really glad he got to 30. Uh, Zary and Anderson with the assists at 14-40. Uh, there's a crossbar and out for Zetterlin after that. Uh, last minute, there's a press by the Sharks. Uh, it's 2-0 for Calgary after one. Second period. Early press by San Jose, a fight between Smith and Klapka. So now Klapka needs an assist. He doesn't get it. He has two-thirds of a Gordie Howe hat trick. Um, Shillington then wires one past a screen. Kuzmenko with the assist at 3.53. It's 3-0 in favor of the Flames. Sharks press at five and a half minutes, but at 5.59, Rooney scores for the Flames. Uh, Pospisil and Coronado with the assist. The shots are 7-4 Calgary at seven minutes. At 6.56, so that should have been six and a half minutes. It's fine. Uh, Uyghur scores from Miramanov and Coleman. Uh, that ends the night for Cooley, who allowed five goals on 23 shots. So Romanov goes in, um, and that's goal number 20 for Mackenzie Uyghur. Kudos to him for hitting 20 goals. So a couple guys hitting milestones for the Flames tonight. I know it's really not much comfort if you're a Flames fan that wanted playoffs, but hey, it's something. Uh, shots are 10 to 3 for the Flames with seven minutes left. The Flames press in the final minute. It's 5 0 Calgary after two. Third period. Sturm has a rush chance this kick aside. The shots are 2-1 San Jose at four minutes. The teams exchange rushes. Kadri's denied on a 2-1-1 on -one rush. Uh, Granlund has a chance that's held. The shots are 5-4 for the Flames with eight minutes left. Flames press with four and a half minutes left. Things get punchy on a hold by Romanov. The Sharks come out of that with a power play with 143 left. Keep in mind, Wolf looking for his first career shutout. It isn't going to happen. At 1951, Zetterlund scores on the power play from Granlund and Graf. Uh, your final score on this one's 5-1. to one. So no shutout for Wolf, but he does get the win. The Flames go to 38-39-5 to finish the season. San Jose does not get to the 20-win mark. They end up 19-54-9. Shots on net, 16-5 Calgary in the first, 13-6 Calgary in the second, 8-6 Calgary in the third. Final shots, 37-17 for the Flames. Power plays, San Jose 1-2, for two, Calgary 0-1. Oh for one. Hits 17-10 to 10 Calgary. Cooley saved 18 out of 23. Romanov saves 14 out of 14. He was perfect in relief, and Wolf saves 16 out of 17. Now, I need to change boards. All right, so um, this this really surprised me tonight. So um, I was a big Chicago Blackhawks fan in the third period of this, and then, no, but we're going to talk about this one first. 
Uh, the Oilers resting players, the Avs didn't, and that was obvious early. So it was Skinner versus Ananen in this one, 119 in. Nachushkin buries a one-timer. It was the first shot on net, but what a first shot. Uh, Lekkonen and Middlestad with the assists. Uh, Parisi has a rush chance that save. The Avs then press, and they score. At 548, it's Rantanen. Top corner from a sharp angle, Taves and McKinnon with the assists. Oilers don't have a shot yet. The Avs then draw a power play, and they score on it. At 7.37, it's Nachushkin with a second goal of the first period. Uh, McKinnon and Makar with the assists. That one deflects in. Uh, it's point number 140 for Nathan McKinnon. He breaks the franchise record for points, set way back when by Peter Stastny. I think it was in 81-82. Uh, 139 points. Uh, at 10.17, Manson scores from Walker and Trennan. Uh, that goal was originally given to Cogliano, but he did not tip it, so it's Manson's. And that's four goals on six shots. So, yeah, Skinner had a rough first period, but so did the Oilers' defense. You get a power play for the Abs, that's killed off. The Oilers then get a power play, and they score on it. It is Holloway tipping in a point shot. Broberg and Kulak with the assists at 15-22. So, Philip Broberg, productive when he's been in the lineup since being called up. Uh, 140 left, there's, there's too many Oilers, so the... Uh, Avs go to the power play, so that rolls over into the second period where the Oilers finish the kill. And again, the Oilers resting players means you're, you're going to have guys who aren't familiar with their line mates. You're going to get too many men on the ice penalties. Brown has a net drive. That's held. The Oilers press at three minutes. CC has a slap shot that's kicked aside. The Avs press at five minutes. Uh, a whistle bails out the Avs. Uh, puck was never covered in that, that case, but the ref lost sight of it. Shots are two apiece at seven and a half minutes. We get a power play for Colorado. That's killed off. The teams exchange rushes, and then at 12 minutes, Parisi restores the four-goal lead. He scores from Colton and Wood. The Oilers press with five and a half minutes left. The Avalanche gets some pressure in the final minute, but it's five to one for Colorado after two. Third period. Uh, Drew Ann was not on the bench to start that third period, so hopefully Drew Ann's okay because he's been really hot for them over the last month. Uh, Oilers press, the Avs block. There's no shots on that for either team three minutes in. Wood fires one wide from the slot. The Avs press at six and a half minutes. Oilers draw a power play. That's killed off. Holloway has a net drive. That's defended. The shots are four to three for the Oilers with six minutes left. Fogel's denied and close. Ryan has a breakaway. That's defended by Kale McCarr. Nicely done without taking a penalty. The Avs press in the final minute, and they win this one 5-1. They go to 50-25-7 with the win, with the loss. The Oilers 49-27-6. Shots on net, 13-7 Colorado in the first, 10-7 Colorado in the second, 11-4 Edmonton in the third. Final shots, 27-25 for the Avs. Power plays, Edmonton 1-2, for two, Colorado 1-4. for four. The hits, 17-11 for Edmonton. Skinner saves 9 out of 13. Pickard saves 13 out of 14. Ananen saves 25 out of 26. So, rough night for Skinner. They took him out after that first period, put Pickard in, and we'll see how things go come playoff time. All right, next up, if this pen works. I don't think it's going to, so I'm going to switch pens. All right, next up. There we go. I only need to do these notes, and then, yeah, when I'm doing the reviews for the playoffs, it's one game at a time. All right, so the Ducks and the Vegas Golden Knights. Maybe the biggest shock of the night. So it's Dostal versus Hill. It felt like Vegas was resting everybody, but apparently everybody's beat up except Hannafin. Hannafin was the only healthy scratch they had tonight. Uh, shots are 2-0 Vegas at 2.5 minutes. Vegas presses at 5.5 minutes. Roy fires one high from the slot. Uh, more pressure by Vegas at 7.5 minutes. Eichel's denied and close. The Ducks were pretty flat in this. In fact, Vegas presses at the half with 8 minutes left. The shots are 9-1 to for the Vegas Golden Knights. Marcia so nearly banks one in. He does not get that 43rd goal. He does not equal William Carlson's record for goals by a Vegas Golden Knight this year. Uh, Terry has a wraparound chance. That's blocked, but it's 0-0 after one. Second period, early press by the Ducks. Hurdles denied from the slot. We get a power play for Anaheim, and they score on it. It goes off Aiden Hill's glove and in. Uh, Vetrano with that one from Fowler and Strom at 425. One concern, if you're a Vegas fan, has to be the state of the goaltending right now. Uh, with Aiden Hill, I think Logan Thompson's been the better of the two. I'll talk about it once I get to the, the preview video for that series between them and, and uh, the Dallas Stars. I, I As a Dallas fan, I would much preferred to have seen LA than Vegas, but what are you going to do? Uh, so the shots are 4-2 to two for the Ducks at 6 minutes. The Ducks press at 9 minutes. Zegers has a shot this blocker to side. Gochi to Carlson gets blocked. Strom's denied on a break. We get a power play for Vegas. Vetrano has a shorthanded rush that helps to end that. Ducks press with five minutes left. With 1.22 left, Vegas goes back to the power play, and they score on it. Eichel puts one in. It goes off Lundestrom's stick and in. 
Theodore and Carlson with the assists at 1847. So it's 1-1 one, one after 2. My expectation was, well, Vegas is going to win this in the third. If they win this, they, they play Edmonton in the first round. If they lose this, they're the number 8 seed in, in the West, and then they start every series on the road. Well, 51 seconds into the third period, Lacombe scores from Goche and Carlson. So that's the first NHL point for Goche in his first NHL game. So he finishes the season with a perfect point per game. Uh, and then at 118 on a brush, uh, Vetrano wires one top shelf. Uh, Hill looked shaky tonight. So that is definitely a concern if you're a Vegas fan, unless you're thinking, well, Thompson's going to be the starter anyways. Uh, shots are 3-2 to two for the Ducks at 6.5 minutes. Eichel has a rush chance that's saved. Vegas presses at the half. Colangelo has a rush chance that's held. The Ducks are outworking Vegas in this game as well. So it's not just like some, some unlucky breaks for Vegas, just the Ducks were outworking them. My thought process on this was, okay, so Greg Cronin may have said to the Ducks in between periods, look, we got 20 minutes left, win 20 minutes. Um, so... Pressed by Vegas with five minutes left. Howden fires one high in a rush. The goalie pull happens with 2.04 left. It becomes a six on four. Uh, Dostel tries for the empty net, misses wide, but they're shorthanded, so it's fine. Uh, the empty netter is scored at 19.43. It's Vitrano with his 37th from Lacombe. So 37 goals is a good year for Frank Vitrano. Uh, the Ducks finish with more wins and points than last year. They go to 27.50 and five with the four to one win. With the loss, Vegas 45-29 and eight. They will start. Their playoffs in Dallas. Shots on net, 11 to 4 Vegas in the first, 10 10 in the second, 9 9 in the third. Final shots, 30 to 23 for Vegas. Power plays, 1 for 1 for Anaheim, 1 for 3 for Vegas. Hits, 23 to 17 Vegas. Dostal saves 29 out of 30. Aiden Hill saves 19 out of 22. All right, and the last game of the night, and, and honestly not the most exciting, but it's LA. LA's style of hockey is kind of like that. So is Chicago's. So Soderblom versus Talbot in this one. Uh, early jump for the Kings. Laferriere's denied as the Kings get some pressure. The Hawks press at four and a half minutes. They can't get to the net. Shots are five nothing Kings at six minutes. Byfield fires one wide on a rush. Arvidsson has a shot that's held as the Kings press. There's a power play for LA. That's killed off. One shot on that power play. Uh, the Kings press with seven minutes left at 15.39. On a fast break from one end to the other, Reichel with a nice goal. Uh, he buries that one. It was a nice deacon close to on Talbot. It's one nothing Chicago after the first, even though they were outshot by more than two to one or more than a three to one ratio. So we go to the second period. Felino has a rush chance that deflects out. The Kings press at two and a half minutes. The lone shot on net is by the Kings at four minutes, and then at 4:37, Victor Arvidsson ties the game from Dano and Moore. Uh, Jones to Tyler Johnson gets picked off. There's a net feed to Donato near miss there. The Hawks have a three on two that's broken up. Gabrikov fires one wide from the slot. There's five shots for Chicago 30 minutes into this game. They had no business being in this game at all. Um, Kings draw a power play. Dickinson scores uh, a shorthanded goal. Uh, Talbot says it was kicked. The review says, yes, it was. So they reviewed it. Yep, it's a kick goal. Uh, the Hawks finish the kill. The thing I liked about that, too, was Talbot's talking to the ref, and the ref's going, yeah, 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 we're going to look at it. Like, just settle down. So the Hawks do then finish the kill. The Kings go back to the power play. They score on this one. Byfield tips one in from inside the crease. Dan Owen Spence with the assists at 16.04. Byfield gets to the 20 goal mark, gets his first goal in a while. Uh, and then at 17.24, Trevor Moore scores from the side of the net. Arvidsson and Dano with the assists. Kings press in the final minute. There's a kick save on a breakaway by Felino, But with 3.8 seconds left, the Hawks get a power play. So it's 3-1 to one LA after two. All the Kings have to do is protect a two goal lead against the, the Hawks in the third period. Easy peasy. Nope. Uh, third period. Bedard's denied and close, and then at 128 from the right circle, Tyler Johnson scores from Kaczynski and Donato. So suddenly it's 3-2. to two. Hawks look to tie it, and they do. At 342, Joey Anderson buries one on a net drive. Uh, Sligert with the assist. And then at 628, Donato scores from Entwistle. He tips that one in. Kings call a timeout, because now they're down 4-3. to three. If they lose this game, they're in Dallas for game one. If they win this game, they're going to Edmonton. If they get a point, they're in Edmonton. So, uh, Kings press at nine minutes. Nazar with a near miss on a rush. Uh, the Kings press with six and a half minutes left. The Hawks uh, icing with 146 left. Goalie pull happens, and then four seconds later, they take a penalty. So, just a, a, one of those things, and I said out loud, well, you can't trust Chicago. And sure enough, at 1839, Arvidsson scores during the six on four. Uh, Byfield and Campe with the assist, so it goes to overtime. The matter. Six seconds in, Campe scores. If he hadn't, if Chicago had won, doesn't change the result. 
Uh, LA goes to 44, 27, and 11 with the win. They finished the season with 99 points. Uh, the Hawks with the overtime loss, 23, 53, and 6. Shots on net, 14 to 4, LA in the first, 11 to 3, LA in the second, 10 to 6, LA in the third, and they had the only shot of the overtime. That's all they needed. Final shots, 36 to 13 for LA. Power play, Chicago 1 for 1, LA 2 for 4. The hits, 21 to 13, Chicago. Soderbloom saves 31 out of 36. Talbot saved 9 out of 13. And if you're concerned about goaltending in LA, might be something valid to be concerned about. Uh, but between Skinner, 9 for 13, Talbot, 9 for 13, maybe we're going to see some goals in that Edmonton LA series this year. We'll see, but they're meeting again. So third straight year, you get Edmonton LA in the first round. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Uh, obviously, tomorrow I'll be doing all four previews for the West. Uh, I'll be doing that in between an interview in the morning and then I have another interview in the afternoon, but I'll fit it all in. And uh, yeah, and then we'll, ho I'm hoping to get everything done so I can go and watch the Abbotsford game tomorrow night before uh, a full weekend of hockey gets started on Saturday. But there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so. Um, the the uh, timestamps are done for now. All right. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I'll talk to you again soon.